Let's see. This video Bit is newer. brought to you by Brilliant. And, and Cold Fusion knows what the hell he's talking about usually. Hi. Welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion, where I cover anything in science, technology, business, or history. Artificial intelligence is generally good at pattern recognition and prediction. But what about creativity? In previous episodes, we've seen the first signs of creativity, or at least the mimicking of creativity. Yeah. We saw AI research generating fashion models, or generating faces that don't exist from scratch, and creating living portraits, which interestingly since then has now made it into a TikTok filter. But towards <laughs> the end of that episode, we touched on AI creating music. It's crazy because tw 2021, right? Bro, it, it's only been a few months since this, and it's gotten so much crazier, so much crazier. Like just in these past few months. At the time, many people were surprised that things like this were possible. But today, we're gonna dive deeper. Being a musician and a producer myself, this was particularly interesting to me. But I think what you're about to see and hear will be interesting to most people. It brings up a fascinating philosophical question about human nature. Is it even possible for a machine to produce original music? Yeah. What's the closest that we've gotten today? And what is creativity anyway? In this episode, I'll attempt to answer these questions. Let's take a look. When I think about music creation, it usually comes in two main forms, playing live instruments and tracking them in software, or using digital instruments and arranging them also in software. At the genesis of either method, a song usually begins with a seed. In my experience, that seed can be anything from playing a guitar riff, a bass line, uh -huh. some synth chords, or even a vocal sample. When I listen to the seed, I begin to hear what comes next in my head, and then I figure out how to get what's in my head into the computer, and then layer it on top. And then I repeat the process until something begins to take shape. This is just how I imagine my music creation process to be logically. It may be different for others. Here's an example. So here, I'm just jamming out some different parts and triggering different loops that I've made. So I started off with a synth line, and then I hear a bass line in my head. So I play that bass line in. Atmospheric. But basic. I'm not a big fan of when people make beats like this. Interestingly, for the vocals in this, I used AI to isolate the vocal sample from a 1975 song. And it was just a simple website that allowed me to do this. Next, I just add some drums that I think would go with that. Then I just keep building part by part. After jamming out the tune to work out all the parts, I start putting it into a structure. And I just keep repeating the process and adding more parts that I hear in my head and then playing them into the computer. And the end result is convincing. If you add some film footage on top, you can get something that has a pretty emotional effect. So what's the AI generated part of this? Just the just the vocals? Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, listens to many examples, learns what the patterns are, and then creates something quote-unquote new. They don't need to consistently receive input from a programmer. Really, it builds on patterns it's learned from previous experience. So for example, a user can input two or more types of melody. So in theory, you could take an AI, give it a sophisticated enough algorithm, Make it listen to every pop song all the time and constantly be updating and use that to determine what the best pop song is to make at that very particular moment or a potential pop song to make in that particular moment. And if it's constantly listening to new pop songs, if it's constantly listening to whatever's getting big numbers, then this could be a really lucrative tool. 
and then use machine learning to combine them in a new way? Could we say that it's somewhat similar to what other musicians do? We'll explore the answer to this at the end of the episode. For now, let's take yeah, a look, yeah, it is similar. look at the state of the art in AI creating music. So currently, machines can make music in two main ways, either manipulating MIDI data or raw audio synthesis. We'll check out the best examples of both. Google's Magenta is a music writing AI that learns from previous melodies, drum patterns, and other sounds to create new ones. In 2021, a Toronto team created the Lost Tapes of the 27 Club, a project featuring songs written and mostly performed by machines in the styles of other musicians who died at age 27. Jimi Hendrix. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because 27, yeah, that, I forgot about that. 27 Club is like a, a lot of stars die at 27. And Amy Winehouse, to name a few. Sony has previously used the software to make a new song from the Beatles. So here's how it works. Each track is the result of AI programs analyzing up to 30 songs by each artist and granularly studying the song section by section. That is, drums, guitar, vocals, and more. For example, if you want a new guitar riff, you just input a bunch of guitar riffs from the original artist and then the AI will produce a new one. The limitation in all of this though is that it can't do an entire song structure or it gets confused. So digging deeper, rather than the artist's songs being fed in and processed as raw audio, they're first converted into MIDI files. So MIDI files are basically bits of code with information that tells the computer exactly how to play a digital instrument, that is the volume, the length of the note, or a particular beat or rhythm, etc. Here's an example of MIDI for those who aren't aware. So you can see these lines that are drawn, and that's the digital information of the note. You can hear how it sounds. This is not a great example. Don't show something with such a, show just simple piano notes if you really want people to understand what it is. But see, I can change the sound of the note at will, but the MIDI information of what note it's playing and the length of these notes will stay consistent. Our format, we are jumped by using, these have to be sifted through by humans to make sense. For example, some plugins generated. That you like a lot, but you know, you maybe either don't have access to a drum kit or you're not a talented or, or skillful drummer yourself. Yeah. You can use the uh, Drumify plugin to take that bass line and, and create a, an accompanying drum beat to kind of continue your compositional process. So let's just hear a quick example of this in practice. So first you're gonna hear a bass line um, that somebody made. So now we're gonna take that and we're gonna turn it into a drum beat to accompany with Drumify. <laughs> Damn. So that was just using the, the bass line, the onsets of the bass notes, extracting that rhythm, and then with this with just a few clicks you can create a drum beat. Chico go along with that. So that's just one example of the types of things we're working on. Okay, so now let's take a look at a different method by OpenAI. And I think this one is pretty cool. So OpenAI has taken a different approach. Instead of doing MIDI files, it uses raw audio to train a model, and the model... I wonder if OpenAI is gonna like, become like, multi-billion... Can I invest? Because OpenAI is on some crazy shit. Hold up, hold up. OpenAI stock. What is OpenAI stock? Oh, it's a non-profit research company. Oh. oh, damn. Spits out raw audio. I would so invest. In return, voices and all. I think this method for AI music creation is much more interesting. The models were trained on a raw data set of 1.2 million songs and used metadata and lyrics from Lyric Wiki. The program works in two main ways. Specify a genre and it will make something from scratch or feed it a section of a song and let it continue writing that song. Here are some interesting examples. Huh. 
<laughs> this second sample is interesting because, for one thing, I fed it a metal tune, and it completely changed up the feel when it took over. Oh. It's almost like it's made for rock. I had it generate three different songs, and then I took the best parts and kind of mashed them together to make an AI remix. So, here's that. It's got a long way to go. <laughs> that was cool, that was cool. <laughs> so this is a little bit cursed but also it generated some genuinely really cool stuff i love the kind of push and pull of the groove that he was trying to make it is really interesting isn't it I also find it entertaining to listen to the unpredictability that comes out from time to time. For sure. There are limitations though. The further the AI gets away from the initial point of the song, the more the direction becomes unstable. If this happens, the song eventually becomes unlistenable. I remember that I'd always have arguments with my good friend who was studying computer science six or seven years ago. We argued about music specifically and if it could ever be created by an AI. I was adamant that they just can't manage the creative process like they can. can. He, on the other hand, thought it was only a matter of time before it happened. It is. But I do admit, we seem to be closer now than we ever were before. It was a fascinating debate and something that was worth discussing. So this leads us to the big question. What is creativity? Is it the expression of the soul? Or is it just a set of rules that we don't yet understand? What do you mean, or? Why can't it be the same thing? Why can't it be both? Why can't the expression of the soul be a set of rules we just don't yet understand? And maybe it's best that we don't understand. Maybe all this endeavor to find out all the secrets to all these things is maybe a stupid uh, a, a goal to achieve. Maybe people who truly understand that it's a journey that counts will understand that the destination is not what makes us happy and that maybe if you want future generations to still have a journey to go down, we shouldn't find a destination. We shouldn't make it so easy for people to find a destination. Let's dig into this a bit more. The Oxford Dictionary defines creativity as... Yeah, I don't care about none of that. 